Happy to unicorn here. I am so happy to have you here with me. Please like the video. As we get into our topic, choose better, they said. So choose better is often um, what is said to African-American women when we go and complain about our experiences with uh, a certain element among African-American men. Instead of compassion or empathy, we are met with you should have chosen better. Oh, say what? He abandoned you and your kids? You should have chosen better. Oh, he ended up on drugs? Well, you he was the type of guy to do that. You should have chosen better. Oh, what happened? He he hit you? Well, you should have chosen better. Didn't you? Hasn't he hit a woman before? Didn't you know that? What? You thought he changed? Well, that's your fault. What? He goes to your church and got saved and you tried to give him the benefit of the doubt? No, nope, you should have chose better. You say, what? He's back in jail? Well, wasn't he in jail the first time? Well, so what if we told you to give that brother a chance and the white man's on his neck and you should just, you know, love him anyway and be grateful that he's a good man and you don't need some rich man. You just, you know, he's back in jail. You say you should have chosen better. So with that being said, today's story focuses on a woman who was murdered. Um, she was a baking executive. Um, here, I'll just go on ahead and read. I'm going to make my screen like this because um, I want you to understand the caliber of woman that we just lost to a black man who was likely in his position as a vice president of this specific Bank of America, likely in his position because of this woman, okay? Likely she was the level up, the catalyst, the catapult that got him to where he was before he was arrested. Coworker arrested in the murder of Reseda Banking Executive. A prominent businesswoman was found dead in her Reseda home on Thursday. The Los Angeles Police Department has arrested a suspect, 52-year-old Anthony Dwayne Turner of Westchester. Now, pardon me, I don't know what Van Wees is. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I'm just going to give it a shot. I just know it's in LA. Now, Turner, the murderer, right, Anthony Dwayne Turner, is being held at Van Wee's jail. Bail is set at $2 million. According to NBC4, jail records indicate Turner also works in banking. Employee records indicate that Anthony Turner worked as a senior vice president and market executive for Bank of America in Los Angeles as recently as this year. A spokesperson for Bank of America declined to comment on Turner's arrest, but did not deny he worked for the bank. Turner and Evan reportedly had a personal relationship that soured as of late. She recently considered obtaining a restraining order against him. KNX has reached out to the LAPD, that's the publication I'm reading from, KNX 1070 um, News Radio. KNX has reached out to the LAPD for further confirmation. The story will be updated as more information becomes available. LAPD officers responded to the 190, 100, gosh, 19300 block, that's how I would normally say an address, 19300 block of Covello Street at around 7 a.m. on Thursday after family members of Michelle Evan or Avon, 48 years old, grew concerned over multiple failed attempts to reach her. Authorities said one family member entered Avon's house or Avon's home and discovered the mother of two and grandmother, so she's a mother of two as well as a grandmother, unresponsive. Police and paramedics were called to the scene. Evan was pronounced dead shortly thereafter. Police have not yet identified a cause of death, but a homicide detective said Avon appeared to have suffered trauma to her face. Do you know what that means? 
That means this man beat her in her face until she died. Evan's death has sent shockwaves through LA, financial services industry. Her career therein has spanned over two decades. Her career in LA financial services industry spanned over two decades. This woman's got 20 years of skin in the game, most of which she spent as a vice president and managing director with the wealth management firm of Merrill Lynch. Do you understand what caliber of woman this is? In June, she moved to Bank America, which also owns Merrill Lynch to take a senior vice president role overseeing diversity recruitment initiatives. Say it with me, diversity recruitment initiatives. One more time. She took a senior vice president role overseeing diversity recruitment initiatives. We are devastated by the news, a spokesperson for Bank of America told KNX. Michelle, was a valued member of our company for more than 20 years and will be greatly missed. We extend our deepest sympathies to her family. Friends and colleagues remember Avon as a champion of women and minorities working in finance. A champion of women and minorities working in finance. She was putting everybody on. Avon's mentor, retired banking executive Daryl Brown, described her as one of the highest ranking, most recognized women in banking in an interview with NBC4. She would always find a way to lift people up, to pull them up, to push them up, particularly in the African-American community or those that were overlooked or deprived or neglected. That is the full quote from Daryl Brown. The name is giving me African-American, Daryl Brown. The name is giving me African-American male of the, of the person who was her mentor. And this is what her mentor had to say of her. She would always find a way find a way if there was if she couldn't see a way she'd find one she'd make a way she would always find a way to lift people up to pull them up to push them up particularly in the african american community are those that were overlooked or deprived and neglected this isn't a good woman this is a great woman that is the end of the quote Avon was highly visible. Avon was a highly visible member of LA's black community. In 2019, she was named one of the city's powerful and influential black woman leaders by the Los Angeles Sentinel and recognized by Black Enterprise Magazine as one of the most powerful women in business. She was a frequent participant in panel discussions and delivered speeches on the empowerment of black women in finance. Do you see the caliber of woman here that we lost to interpersonal violence? In July, Avon was appointed to the board of directors of the Los Angeles Urban League, the local chapter of the oldest and largest community-based civil rights organization in the United States. Honey predates the NAACP, just so we are clear. It says the oldest and the largest community-based civil rights organization in the United States. For those of you who are younger, for those of you who qualify as my nieces and nephews, if you haven't heard of the Urban League, and this is your introduction, understand that when there wasn't a way for us, these people made a way. She was appointed to the board of directors. That's higher than a president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, appointed to the board of directors, so thoroughly trusted in her community, in LA. 
appointed to the board of directors of the Urban League in her, in her local chapter. Danny J. Bakewell, senior executive publisher of the Sentinel, called Avon a dear friend and dedicated warrior for our community and a statement punished on Thursday. So again, you have high level people giving this woman high level praises. So uh, I want to show you really quickly a photo of the man who took her out. So if you could just bear with me one moment. Thank you for waiting in the wings with me. I am back with a photo of the murderer. This is Black Femside US. Many of us who are pro-Black female, we follow Black Femside US on Instagram. This is the Facebook page. Now, those who know me know that I'm not much of a Facebookian. I do not hang out on Facebook for whatever reason. It's not my cup of tea. But this is the murderer, 52-year-old Anthony Dwayne Turner, who, mur who murdered 48-year-old Michelle Avon. Choose better, they say. It's your fault, they say. Couldn't you tell he was a murderer? Couldn't you tell he was? What does this photo give other than handsome, successful black man? Judging by his head, his hair, I mean, he's giving, you know, he, he's not giving a spiritual occultist. He's giving, he's giving, I was raised in a church. He's giving the the black community looks up to me. He's giving, you know, everybody wants their son to grow up and be like me. He's giving successful black man. He's not giving pooky, ray ray, derelict, dusty, none of that. Well, you women have intuition and you should have been able to how? And when I first saw this on the channel, uh, The Pink Pill, as a moderator on that channel, I had to block like, I mean, at least half a dozen people. Because the first thing, when you see that this incredibly valuable, valuable woman, apex, alpha woman was murdered. The first thing they wanted to say is, oh, you know, you're coming after black love and, you know, you just want to slander the image of the black man. Well, what did she do? And these detractors were not very quick to sympathize with her horrible death. It would be one thing if somebody shot you when you died instantly, stabbed you and you bled out. Blunt force assault to the face. He beat this woman in her face until she died. understand who you're talking to when people enter this conversation without, you know, condolences, outrage, shock, and they say, well, 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 we don't know the backstory. Because honey, we did not need to know the backstory to George Floyd before we ended up putting our lives on the line, protesting in front of the police, Black Lives Matter, right? We, we didn't need to know the backstory. We didn't need to know that this was, you know, some allegedly former porn star who is a deadbeat father who didn't take care of his kids, who held a pregnant black woman hostage with a gun at gunpoint with the gun to her pregnant womb. We didn't need a backstory. 
It was no. Our black men are are, are victimized. They're, they're the primary target. Uh, you know, white supremacy. You know that we just went for it. But with this, and with these women, everybody wants to know why. Everybody wants to know. Well, well what did she do? What did she do? Maybe she was too aggressive. Meg the Stallion. Well, what did she do to Tory Lanez? Well, 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 you know, Meg, Meg is so tall. Tori is so short. Let me tell you something. I don't care if a woman is six foot four and a man is five foot six. If they are grown, he is more powerful than her. He can whoop her. Don't come talk to me about any exceptions to the rules because exceptions to the rule only prove the rule. So when you have your little novelty cases of a woman knocking out a man, yeah, an exception to the rule. But all of these women, because of how they look, because of who they are, we don't just immediately go to oh, Black Lives Matter. We have to do so. Like, well, what did she do? She looked, don't she look trifling? Don't she look like she did something to somebody? Don't she look like she got an attitude problem? Don't she look like she talked to men crazy? Don't she look like she's not submissive? Don't she look like she don't know her role? Don't she look masculine? Don't she look like a hoe? Don't she look like she's out here bad and being fast? And don't she look like, y'all, Choose better, they said. Okay. But how? How? I mean, she already, you know, started to distance herself from him. She already didn't want any, anything to do with him. She already was considering getting a restraining order and following the law and doing what she was supposed to do. I understand why black men feel entitled to the labor and love and loyalty of black women. But because of our labeled labor, loyalty and love to you, we have deprived ourselves of it. Being pro-black woman is not being anti you. Being pro-black isn't being anti-white. But being pro-Black female is to return to the Black woman what she invested in the Black man. It's to give her the energy that she gave out and gave away. It's to invest in herself first. Brother, you invest in yourself first. Why is it a criminal act when we do so? Why is it an act of betrayal when we say to ourselves, hey, we need to do something about black femicide in America. The fact that every six hours, an African-American woman, a black woman is murdered and 98% of the time, it's by a black man. Her son, her father, her neighbor, her neighbor, her aunt, like why? Why can't I love my little black nephews and love my strong, amazing apex unicorn of a black man and still be pro-black woman without it being a problem and defend us and focus on what is harming us and what is taking us out? Why is that a crime? We lost a pillar of our community. She was only 48. Some of you youngins, I get why you would call that old, but trust me, that's called median age. She, she's middle age. She wasn't over the hill yet. She had so much more to give, to offer. And this woman was going hard for black women and men in her own image, going hard. Vice president of this, executive board, board member of that, panel member here, charitable there, Diversity recruitment, I mean, I mean, she did it. She did everything we ever wanted a black woman to do. 
when it comes to the black community and don't you leave your men behind. Don't you go all the way up there and forget where you came from. She did it all. Like Malcolm X, she was murdered by the people she was trying to protect. When do we say to ourselves, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and protect myself. I'm the weaker vessel, I'm a woman, I need protection. And I shouldn't be criminalized for allying with men who can protect me. My partner is a member of the NRA, a, re a Republican member of the NRA. Why should black women be called, you know, all manner of bed wenches and names and race traitors because they want to appeal to the NRA? or the police or whoever, or whoever the big men with guns are who are willing to tell us our lives matter. Why should we care about their color if they're willing to save our lives and to improve our quality of life? We've gone so hard for so long. Those of you who have watched my channel, you know that I was raised to be a handmaiden, pick me, mammy. I come from a male dominated family a huge family, which is mostly male. Everything in my life was about service to the black man at the expense of my own self. And I didn't mind what it cost me because I, th I, thought, I, I thought I was doing God's work. Such a Christian, such a believer, such a God-fearing woman. Black women must give that energy to themselves, especially if you want them to stop fulfilling certain stereotypes and ratchet this, masculine that, we've got to expend our energy on ourselves and stop picking up men who will resent us for picking them up because it suggests by nature of dragging somebody up or pulling somebody up, it suggests that you're superior. that you're the man, that you wear the pants, that you've got the power. So maybe, just maybe, African-American women need to focus on themselves. Maybe, just maybe, the women who give birth to this community ought to better themselves and give their energy to themselves so that they can be better human beings for themselves and then everyone else in that order you want to argue i can't argue with you you mad <laughs>